Okay, we are recording you, and how are you, mate? Good morning. Yeah, I'm great, thank you. It's a good Wonderful. time. Wonderful. Well, let's just jump straight in, because I've had a look at your, your selection, or selections, for track one. So um, let's let's jump straight in, because... You've sent three. You've been super greedy, but that's all right. You can have honourable mentions. <laughs> that's fine. And they're good choices as well, so I'm looking forward to discussing them. So, um, you know, tell me the song that you regard as having the greatest ever intro, please. Greatest intro. This is the thing. I, I love so many different pieces of music, so many songs. It's so hard to choose. But what I've gone with, well, the first one that came to mind was... Um, Living is a Problem Because Everything Dies by Biffy Clyro, which has this crazy interest, just these almost random stabs. Where, duh, 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 duh. And it like builds this huge suspense. And um, I remember watching this video on of them performing live at you know, a big festival and they really milked it. And it was amazing, the tension that they built and then the release afterwards, incredible. And I suppose it came up for me because I've been helping make Freya Riding's live show. And so we were like, okay, we're going we're to do an intro. What's it going to be like? And that was the first thing that came to mind. Um, so we didn't, we didn't use the exact thing, but we've, we've taken ideas from that kind of building suspense and it making the impact even bigger when it, when it really all comes in, isn't it? It's interesting that you, you, you talk about Biffy Clara and, the, and the, the power of them live because um, I've, I've been pretty honest about Biffy Clyro on this podcast, and I've said that I'm not I'm a huge fan, and, uh, and yeah. I know that I'm in the minority because people love that band, and and it's not easy to transcend as a band where you your front cover of the enemy and your front cover of Kerrang. You know that's that's not an easy thing to do. Muse have done it, and Biffy have done it, and and uh, but. When I saw I saw Biffy Clyro play, uh, I may have mentioned this on, on a previous episode, but I saw Biffy Clyro play an Enemy Awards about 10 years ago, probably around the time that yeah. track was coming out. Fucking hell, you and I have never heard three people make such a big so sound. Good. It was unbelievable. And like, and I was like, oh, I get it now. I get why people like this band, because if you've seen them live, they're going to take your head off your shoulders. It was yeah. sonically amazing and and that as you say that them kind of sim i'm um, sorry them sort of string stabs at the beginning yeah and it's and and that's interesting that you chose that and i'm gonna i'm gonna use that as an example because like, yeah because that was a single and i believe that was the first single from an album as well really i, I believe so. that now would you well, this is this is where i'm going with it and it's <laughs> like could you imagine taking that to a label and going right here's our first single um oh for the first 30 seconds not a lot happens, just <laughs> these huge stabbing <laughs> strings. And it's like, well, what? What radio station yeah. or Spotify playlist is going to touch that? So with all of that in mind, Ewan, mm. when you're writing, how much of them kind of considerations filter through into your creative process? Would you go for a 30-second elongated string and go, well, the song's going to take yeah. its, you know, take its own path? Or are you aware of the impact of trimming things and tailoring things to get on them playlists and to get on the radio yeah i think it's it's the reality and it's it's the truth and i i when there is a really great intro i'm like okay nice but it has it has to be good Do you know what i mean a, a kind of lukewarm mediocre intro it really it kind of a, almost offends me <laughs> these days you're like okay are you sure about that yeah but um, yeah, so for me, I have been a little bit conscious of it. I remember about th maybe around five years ago, I used to listen to some Jade Bird and it was like within within two, three seconds, like it started and she was singing. And I was like, it was it was having a big impact on me. And I really liked the immediacy of it. So it was something that I tried to put into my my songwriting, because I think when you write a song, you kind of have these you're sat at the piano, you sat at your instrument, you're writing away and it all kind of melds together. And maybe maybe you play, maybe you're doing your 10 minute intro or your 30 second intro. But then when it comes to the recording process, I just really listened to it and I did cut. I cut a bunch of intros back then. This is this conversation is making me excited to, I always like to set myself little challenges sometimes when I'm doing songwriting. So 
you're drawing my attention to maybe we need to bring back the long intro. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the Absolutely. Epic saga. Yeah. But I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that question. I, I, I think, you know, there's some of the most successful biggest selling records of all time you know people had laughed bohemian rhapsody out the door now if somebody took it to a label and went this is going to be our new single and it's like no it's yeah. not um but and i also think sometimes when you do that sort of you know you, you you go to some writing camp somewhere in europe and you all sit there to try and create this perfect pop record mm. i mean i understand that's not an easy thing to do but yeah i think if you're looking at it like a looking at it like a science yeah you, i think that's what you so lose, you lose the emotion i think i've and i've told people this as well um i've been like okay this is something i did and i'm noticing this is a bit of a long intro blah, blah, blah whatever but um for me as like a really super independent artist um, I release my music and it's on Spotify, Apple Music or whatever. And I literally do have five seconds to make to make someone who has never heard of me, is not interested in anything I have to say, from them to go, I I might want this in my life. I might want this music as part of me. And I'm, I really treat that re- relationship and that interaction with a lot of like respect because... Yeah because I'm one of those people and I'm flicking through and it's like, I want to, I want to know and I want to feel straight away whether this is worth my time. And I don't, you know, that can sound a little bit cutthroat, but I think the truth is we, our attention is being fought for so hard on so many different areas and so many different ways that it's for me as a musician um, and where I'm at right now, I don't want to make a compromise where I'm like, no, I'm going to keep this or I'm, I'm not going to get straight to that feeling or the emotion. And then I'm going to not be able to connect with some really amazing, beautiful people who might, um, you know, connect with what I'm saying and how I'm saying yeah. it. Ab- absolutely. And and I should say that th- th- this this episode has, has come about through um, uh, Freya uh, being yeah. a, 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 a guest. Freya's episode has not come out yet, I don't believe. Um, no, no, no. And... Uh, and Freya chose one of your tracks, and and I heard it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is beautiful!" And uh, and I was like, I "Think you want to come on the podcast?" And I like what you've yeah. done. I like what I like what you've done. We won't give anything away, but I like what you've done at the end of this. Uh, what's going to happen at the end of this episode with you? Oh, really? I like that. I like that. It's good to pay it back. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, look, you you sent three over, so let's shout out the other two, mate. So I suppose the other two are like super similar tunes and super similar intros. And they're a little bit like that song that you heard, my song, The Art of Letting You Go. And interestingly enough, that one does actually have an intro. That completely, oh, I'm blowing my own mind. Yeah, that was quite a healthy <laughs> intro as well. And that's, it's kind of like this piano, but that's okay. So I've managed to engage people with an intro that has like this beautiful piano. And I think what was happening for me when I was making that, the, the intro for my song, Art of Letting You Go, I was really in love with that piano sound and I kind of wanted it to be throughout the whole song. But it, when I kept it in the rest of the song, it kind of detracted from the vocals and it detracted yeah. from the emotion. So it kind of ended up getting like moved out of loads of different sections. And then it was left at the beginning. I was like, oh, I just I just love this so much. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't I couldn't do the thing where it starts straight with the vocal. Anyway, so these two songs have a similar intro to mine. State Lines by Nova Amore and Perth by Bonnie Ver. They've got this just um I don't know how to describe it, but it's like really melodic and really soothing and, and quite like a calming guitar. It just, it really throws you into a place where you're starting to get relaxed. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, yeah, I'm ready for a relax. Let's take me there. Um, and th- that's why I like those two songs and their intros. Wonderful. Wonderful. Tell me the first song you remember <laughs> hearing that had an emotional impact on you, please. Um, so I can't remember how old I must have been. There must have been 10, 11, 12. It could have been any one of them. And I had a birthday and I got given a whole bunch of CDs. Um, and one of them, you might not expect this from me, but one of them was the Eminem show. It was an album. Um, so guess who the artist was, Eminem. And there was so, what I, 
what I really loved about that and what I really love about Eminem is there's so much emotion and there's so much soul and there's so much truth in all of it. And I suppose that was the first time that, especially even like rap had had a really emotional connection with me. Um, so I, I, when you, when I read this question, I was like, mm, what, which one's it going to be? I think Mockingbird was the first one that emotionally, like, you know, you kind of smells or sounds can snapshot you back and you don't necessarily know all the reasons or why, but yeah, Mockingbird Eminem um, was, was, was a huge tune. And that's, that's, you know, I had no connection to the internet. I had no connection to the like outside world and thinking, I wasn't thinking like, oh, which song is the single or which song is the hit or whatever. That's just like a guy and his literal, what the CD Walkman. Um, and I was given like a little booklet where you can put all your CDs in and then you take one out, you put it in and you got, yeah. Yeah. So funny. Um, it's a different time, isn't it? But um, yeah. Mockingbird and Stamp. I, I was about 10, 11. Yeah. So that's going to be like 20 years ago. What's that? But, um, yeah. but it's, it, it, it shouldn't be overlooked like the impact that I mean on a 10 year old you know Eminem would have been the most exciting thing out there at that point like how exciting yeah. was, was was Eminem when he dropped it was like a complete new just it, it just took hip-hop to another place and yeah and 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 turned so many people onto hip-hop that probably yeah weren't hip-hop fans and and to this day, you know, you, you, I mean, I, I, I DJ in, um, in, in my mm. venue in Essex and you still drop Eminem. Yeah. It goes yeah. off. Uh, off, in it, yeah, every and time. Like, <laughs> and how many kids, you know, how many 10 year olds were listening to lyrics to songs that were making <laughs> any sense to them until you listen to Eminem? And the way mm. that, you know, you, you touched on the fact that he's got soul in the traditional yeah. sense, you think of, artists having soul being these kind of like huge heart-wrenchingly big vocals it's soul pre presents itself in many forms and and i think yeah. that eminem you know the, the 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 soul that he put into that the the honesty in his writing and the way that he presented it and the you know the the way that he would rhyme and spit and stuff was absolutely phenomenal mm. and and i know for a fact that like there's kids that music wasn't resonating lyrically with until Eminem come along and it was like, all right, yeah, I get this. Yeah. I'm, I'm listening to this on a different level to I have music previously. Do you know what I'm saying? It was just so real and so honest and unfiltered. And it's like, you know, when I make music, the if this, this isn't all music and I love all different types of music, but for me, when I'm trying to make music, like the kind of core thing is to try and like, you know, package that emotion or like, share that feeling or it's just I'm writing pretty much a therapy diary entry that ends up resonating with someone else but like and and so that's kind of like a core value for me not like intentionally but I think that's why I like I really resonate with that because it's he's always what like it's almost a, a whatever he's doing he's always like giving you this emotion and you can like it just it impacts you so so hard I mean my my brother and sister have a story where they obviously my brother was obsessed with Eminem too and then um, him and my sister went to like a gig and supposedly like, I don't know, they're like 15, 16 or whatever. And it starts like pouring, raining in like Wembley Stadium or whatever as, as Eminem's playing. Do you know what I mean? That's like a bit one to, I'm sure uh, that's happened to other people now, but that's, you can't beat those endorphins, can you? It's like a teenager in the rain. To Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you just touched on family there. Um, where where was growing up and um, and was was home a musical place? Totally, yeah. So mum and dad kind of were in bands and stuff, and then they end up being in a band together. Um. So and then brother, he's an artist, Alex R J Phillips, and we got um. So not R V, not R J, J's me, Alex R V Phillips, and then my sister Jane, she's she's hogging the karaoke whenever she can, <laughs> and. And my little sister Enya as well. She's she's in a band called Reeve and she does her own stuff, Enya too, that I produce on. So it's like we all caught the bug. Every yeah. single one of us is like, we're singing away. There's there's nothing stopping us. Um, and I think that's because that's a huge part of all of this. Like, you know, my my dad was 
very much the kind of he's the lead singer type and he's still gigging to this day so i'm sure as we were little it was all singing all dancing we would go yeah. um we got like family in ireland and we'd do like our family holiday and they'd they probably forced us a bit too much but like get up and sing for your auntie and your uncle yeah. or whatever so we were we were the you know and there's like a local stage school that does like music acting and dancing and stuff and and my dad taught singing there and we 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 went there and um you know our nickname as a family was the von traps so um <laughs> like we're still getting on the group chat my mum's still being like i really hope that one day we'll all sing together like that's the love it it's, she's not she's not letting it go so it's funny <laughs> what sort of music was on the stereo at home growing up what were you folks listening to oh man um there's so many different bits like there'd be times that my mum would just non-stop listen to Eurythmics um there'd be because they were in one of those um look back and it looks a bit like quite funny 80s bands so it was a bit of that um the fun side of the 80s going on um but you know everything from kind of Shania Twain and I'm trying to think was the stereo on indoors a lot? Um, well, so I've got, had a bit of a weird life as well. So I'm just kind of growing up normal kid in, um, you know, wherever we live, like up in the suburbs. And then I was in a choir and this lady was like, oh, you can sing. And so I ended up getting kind of, I don't know what the word is, but picked out and chosen to go sing in this cathedral choir. So a little bit like, like Westminster Abbey, but around the corner. So I went and lived there. So I wasn't actually at home from eight till almost like 22 when I came back from uni, but I did that. And then I did this, you know, another boarding school because it was kind of, I was on that path by then. So I was sort of thrown into the, this whole new world. So we were singing like choir music every, like seven days a week. So when it comes to the stereo, I think that's why, you know, I talk about Eminem and maybe we'll talk about some of these other first CDs I got. I you know, when I was younger, I was singing Elvis and doing knee slides at five. But once I went to um, this choir school and I was there, there wasn't really a stereo that was on. It was like the stereo was, we were rehearsing in the mornings, then we were rehearsing in the afternoons, then we were sure. singing every day. And then we were doing our homework and it was bedtime. So it's a bit of a weird life. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, a, that's touching on that, I suppose. Well, look, let's 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 talk school then. So, so tell me the song that reminds you of your time at school, please. Oh, it reminds me of school. Oh yeah. Okay, this is the next question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought this was like a off the fly. It felt so natural. I was like, oh yeah, what is it? I've got it written down, haven't I? Um, right in front of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know the answer. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue for some reason. There was two. So, yeah, or in, in, I don't know what we call it, high school or secondary school or whatever. But um, I'd been in this kind of very classical world where it was all, all singing and dancing. And then I made a mate. I made a friend, me and Charlie. Um, and we we started a band, essentially. So it was kind of my my introduction, my introduction introduction to to like pop and rock music, and so we were in a rock band. And I just remember we we're sort of like walking down, walking down between classes and stuff, like chatting shit about One Republic and how great it is, and being like, "Oh, I love this! Isn't it amazing?" And he's just he was like, "It's the first time maybe I." He was like, "Oh, Ryan Tedder's voice is just incredible. Listen to this, blah blah blah," and I was like who's Ryan Tedder and he was like One Republic and then I, I I really got into that album and again that that's got so much emotion but so much like drive and passion and you know my teen indie rock band um zeitgeist uh, what I was feeling so Stop and Stare would be the one that really really jumps out to me and as as an indecisive Libra well I'm not decisive I'm not there we go said it it's, it's out now I am decisive but I don't know I like to 
have options. The the other one I saw because Paramore played live the other day, and I saw a friend's story, and it's there's this bit in All I Wanted by Paramore that she's all I wanted was you. She just does this incredible vocal, and it's like the song's not their most famous song. The song's not the most popular song. It's you know maybe it's not even the best song, but it's just this 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 vocal and what it is about it just always I can't forget it. And the first you know the first time you hear a song can't forget it so I was in sick form or whatever and I was playing that song on repeat it's good times so tell me you know a, a little bit about school and 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 how you found it because you know being sort of you know plucked out and and, and said look you know you, you you've got a voice let's let's go and pursue this mm. uh and then finding yourself in in, in boarding school and t- tell me a little bit how that was so I think that's been a really big part of like the last couple of years for me as well um so basically I went I started going to therapy in like 2000 and what is it now 2023 like maybe late 2019 maybe early maybe could be 2018 can't remember anyway and I think this is the kind of subject and the thing that you know everyone around me around me was saying this is great this is really good this is this is good for you you must be so you're so lucky all of this stuff I think you of reclaiming like what I actually think and what my story is has been a big part of like understanding myself and I would say like if I was to go back I don't I don't really rate it I don't think I would do it and I don't think I would send it to someone else um it's I think family is so important and spending that time with your family is so important um so I think I would always lean in and fight for that and I think that's been a big part of our journey as a family is kind of reclaiming and kind of fighting to be closer um and i think that's really good so yeah, I'll about that. no ab- absolutely i, I just it, it, it's you know it's, it's horses for courses and and i don't know I, I, like for me like boarding school was something i was threatened with when i was a naughty kid is it <laughs> yeah literally we'll send you off and, to, and 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 yeah. it was and, and i remember i played up and <laughs> Once and, and when I come home, there was a a, a a like a brochure for a boarding school, and I remember thinking, "Holy shit, I, I can't go to boarding school. Like, I want to live, you know, with with, with my family with and your mates, yeah, yeah, and 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 where my friends are, and 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 I think I think that's kind of really sort of give me a warped view of it because I've had multiple guests on this podcast that have all you know um, been to boarding school well, and, and loved it, or whatever. And, and 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 have had a positive experience from it, but. Yeah. Um, I think because it was so alien to me and it was just used against me as if like you you you, you play up, <laughs> that's where you're going. I was like, God no. And uh, it's almost like I can hear that in the Simpsons or something, you know. I like <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um when you was at school, yeah, and 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 you know, I I'm presuming a big focus for, for your your, your studies there was was you know pursuing the the the, the, the life of of, of, the mu- of of music and choir. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you wanted to do, or did you? You said you started a band at that point. You know, what did you yeah. want to do? This is this is kind of the layers as well, because you know everyone's saying it's really good for you, and for me, I don't think it was a perfect match. Like, I really enjoy like there's been some of it that I've really really enjoyed and got a lot out of like the classical music there's there's so much there and you know I have really enjoyed some of it but I think my relationship with it was I was being in (laughs) in a way sort of forced to do a lot of this stuff it's like because I was there and because I was there on like music scholarships which means I'm getting all the money off etc um it was sort of my job to perform, you know, whether it be like I'm singing this or I'm playing the cello yeah. in this or I'm, or I'm, you know, I had to be in these things. I had to be showing face and I had to be, otherwise they're kind of, you know, what's my job. And I think, I think when I was interested in other things, like say I wanted to do some, some acting in a play or a school thing, I, I wouldn't be able to get, I'm, I'm sure this is just, I'm sure they probably just didn't want to cast me because I wasn't any good but like you know I definitely I wasn't really allowed to be as intri- intri- intricated in involved or as as heavily 
um, interested. I've lost the word. I wasn't really able to be part of these things because it had all these other commitments that I think, you know, behind the scenes, it was sort of a, a given that, oh, no, 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 he's got to be doing that. So I couldn't be, yeah, couldn't be doing plays and be like, sorry, I can't come to re orchestra rehearsals because I'm in a play or whatever. Yeah. So I think, and then sim similarly, like with the, with the rock stuff, it would be like, we'd be in the rehearsal studios, like, you know, and it was really exciting and it was new. And then I'd have to be like, guys, sorry, I've got to, I've got to go. And it would cut, it would cut a lot of my experiences there, like short. Yeah. Um, you know, I get, I'd get half of the time that I was enjoying or like really leaning into something. And, and for me, I think my life now is essentially I'm a, I'm a singer songwriter, I'm a producer, doing a bit of MDing and, and like, whilst, you know, maybe I will could mock up a string arrangement every once in a while, which I don't actually end up doing ever. No one really uses like music or music notation. So I've like really been through this process of unlearning a lot of these things that I've been taught are good for me. And then I'm out in the world doing the thing that I'm passionate about. And more often than not, it's it's less it's 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 kind of getting in the way. So I've been on a process of sort of relearning myself, like really having a relationship with with what I like and what I enjoy. And I'm getting, I almost had this little mission with myself that I, I'm really enjoying where to almost forget all of the things I was taught and really come back from this like core, pure place of like, what do I think? What do I feel? And how would I get there if I, if I hadn't done it ever before in my life? And I think sometimes when I see or hear musicians that like, I'll be like, oh, cool. And they, and they kind of make a point of saying, they don't really know what's happening within musically or they don't really know what's happening or like why it's good. It's just like, it's all instinct and it's all, um, I don't know, just belief. Um, those are my favorite musicians. When, when the kind of the magic of music is there because it's like, you know, you watch a magician, they do the trick. As soon as you find out, or if you're someone who kind of is like knowing or thinking about all the technical stuff that's going on behind the scenes, I think you lose all the emotion, you lose you lose all the joy, and I, and I, I really try and channel that that emotion, that and that love and that joy back into, you know, something that I've been doing for quite a while now. Um, so that's been a part of my process is to kind of almost feel like a bit of a newborn, um, yeah. because. It's, it's bringing some good results and I'm really enjoying it because it's like, oh, what would you do if it was just you? And then like, you get to do it and um, and it feels good. It feels good, man. That was so, probably a bit of a ramble. I'm not really No, sure. not at all. Not <laughs> at all. On a journey. Tell me the first song that you bought from a record store. Well, similarly, because I was, I was all locked up. Um, um, <laughs> You're not helping. Then... You're not helping my views on boarding school. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, yeah, so one of these birthdays, I was brought a care package, um, and it was, so the birthday was like, the killers, uh, hot fuss, uh, it was, I predicted a riot by the Kaiser Chiefs, it was Black Eyed Peas with the, um, the one with Funk It on, no, Pump It, not Funk It, um, Elephant, incredible, uh, is it? what is it, Monkey Business, that's it, right. yeah, Monkey Business, and Eminem, the Eminem show. So those are the ones in my little CD wallet. Um, so, so I don't. Re I didn't even buy it. I was given it. I couldn't tell you the first one I was bought. That's crazy. Yeah, maybe that's important. Maybe I could go and buy something now. When you listen to, you know, somebody that was 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 in a band, you know, at, at school, and you you receive. Um, was it the Kaiser's album or just a single I predict right? Yeah, the the album I predict right. Yeah. Okay. Uh so so you get that record and you get hot fuss. Yeah. Could you because them two records now, you listen back to them. Personally, I don't think the killers have touched that record ever since. I, I don't think they've got anywhere close to the absolute pop gems that fill that record. Um mm. Could you, could you tell, was it just new and exciting music for a youngster or was the, the hooks and how infectious 
because there's there was so much indie music about at that point, you know, and it yeah. was it was everywhere. It was a real golden time for indie music. But them two mm. bands, the pop sensibilities in what they were doing, I yeah. think outshone the other bands that were that were coming through there in regards to how you know I've, I've uh, early on, I spoke to Nick from the, the, the Kaiser Chiefs, who was who was writing. I've had Ricky on as well, actually, but but Nick wrote the songs. Nice, yeah. And 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 you you can tell that these people grew up listening to great pop records, and mm. it's it's all well and good being super indie and cool, but if you can write, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, an intro to Mr. Brightside, or you can write that intro to Every Day I Love You Less and Less. Like, which yeah. isn't a million miles away from that Biffy one, actually. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's just that sort of <laughs> stabbing strings. Um, but uh, could could you tell that these were really solid pop songs? Yeah, I, I think I think that's one of the core things for me as well. You know, I think the same with my parents. They love, you know, on one side, I was experienced this like. Oh, quite elitist, snooty, like, oh, the most complicated classical music is the most, the best. That was sort of like one part of my life. And then there was my family and my, you know, my parents who like have this real love for great, sophisticated, but always pop songwriting, you know, when it comes down to it, it's just like, it's, it's like this diamond of songwriting in the sense that it's just gone through so, it's so sophisticated and, I think that's why I also love things like Motown. It's just that there's great songs. Um, anyway, so yeah, I completely agree. For me, that's what I love about these. They have these, this combination of this like ultimate sophistication of the, the music in it and the way it's put together. And yeah, when you think about some of the intros and the iconic sounds of Hot Fuzz and stuff, I don't know, it just blows your mind. You're like, how would anyone actually do that? Yeah. Um, still to this day so i i love the songwriting and it's it, it's a huge factor for me and i think that's always my starting point is the song like i hate to be that guy but for me it's the song it's the song it's the song and um and when that song gets combined with like real love and hard work and and genius essentially because that was what was happening was they were there i like i've heard a little story about um the killers um doing hot fuss and i think someone was like the assistant engineer or whatever and it's basically they're like it was it was brandon like the reason that's incredible wasn't because of the producer or whoever it was like he just knew exactly uh, the story that i was told is like he knew exactly what he was doing and he was just he was going to town on it you know with this like ferocious energy and you know i think that conviction and that that train of thought and belief is so, so powerful. And I think it really translates. Um, Completely. I, I, I had, um, I had the lead guitarist on uh, who wrote that lick to Mr. Brightside. Mm. And he didn't choose it as his greatest intro. I was like, dude, you've wrote the most infectious intro of the last 30 years and you're not going to yeah, credit yeah. yourself. <laughs> but, but then listening to what he was saying for like all of his influences and what, where he was coming from yeah. as, a, as, as an artist, I couldn't hear them in the killers whereas i know that brandon grew up listening to the smiths and the pet shop boys and yeah. new order and i just think well there you go that's the killers he's yeah. a hybrid of them three bands perfectly yeah and it's like you can hear yeah, that yeah, yeah. like brandon's definitely taken and, and the synth playovers that he's playing on on, on so many of them tracks it's yeah and a combination and, and since then you know i mean they, they're called the killers i don't know if you know since why they're called then. the killers like, I don't know what was that? Uh, the, in in the New Order video for Crystal, um, there's a uh, New Order on in the video, but there's a a, a put together band of supermodels. No way! And if you look at the drum skin, <laughs> it says the Killers, and that's their fake that's band. Actually, and so yeah. <laughs> that's where he got the band name from. And and obviously you've then seen Brandon, you know, bring out the Pet Shop Boys at, at Glastonbury, and you've seen him, you know, bring out Johnny Marr at Glastonbury, and mm. and so you know he's. He's literally just going, look, these are my heroes and this is where this band, you know, come to fruition yeah, yeah. from that hybrid of these these incredible pop bands. And and I think he just pulled it all together for that debut record and just smashed it. Mm. Uh, you know, even... I, go on, go yeah, on, sorry. You go. No, you go, you go, you go. 
Oh, like, just, just things like Midnight Show and, and things like that. They, they weren't even yeah. singles, but they're just fucking incredible. Yeah. Or, what was, every, what was yeah, you going to say, every... Ewan? Sorry. No, all credit to, obviously, the guitarist. and Because I think, you know, when he's done his, Brandon Flowers has done his solo stuff, I obviously way prefer The Killers. So I think mm. when you're in that band setting, like, I think you need the conviction. But all of those players are really going to be the reason it's good yeah. it's not the re- it's not just brandon that is the reason it's good it's everyone together but i 100%. think it's the, the conviction and the and the vision and the determination like is i suppose what i was i think chatting about yeah i think every band needs somebody that drives it you know you yeah. you, you you can't have four leaders in a band it won't work i think you've always got to have mm. that one that that almost wants it a little bit more than the others and and just mm. has that that stronger vision i think every every band it, and if there's two, if you get a Morrissey and Ma, or you get, you know, the, the, these these famous kind of songwriting duos, they do fall out. It does happen. You yeah. know, it's very well documented. What, Liam and Noel have fallen nah, out? Nah, they've never fallen out. out. Lennon and McCartney, yeah. never. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, I'm I'm hoping that when uh, you got to uni, um, yeah. there was there was some clubbing. <laughs> yeah, there was. There was. People dragged me out. Well, this is the thing. I was in I was in one crew, and I maybe should have been. I ended up being able to kind of morph into an, another clubbing scene. But yeah, I went from the kind of Tyo Cruz. Every every night of my life was just Tyo Cruz with that dynamite song. And I was like, oh, here we go again. But then and then if I was in the indie clubs, um, it'd be it, every night would end on "I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor" by Arctic Monkeys. Every single one, and it, it was great. Um, so yeah, you can't forget that stuff, can you? Where was uni? Uh, Manchester. Oh, I mean, if you're gonna go to uni, Manchester, that's gonna tick the box, right? Yeah, it, it really did. It was great. Um, I did. I like. It was weird though, because I've come from London, so I was sort of like, you know, had this. London just is gigantic, and there's like little cities within cities. So when I got to Manchester, I was like, oh, well, this feel, like it felt a bit small. <laughs> yeah um but but i yeah it was really really good and i've met so many cool people from it and i think my favorite thing about manchester is that and the the people i met had were in that similar lane to me where um uh because i am this thing i end up getting peer pressured into doing classical music at uni terrible choice for me um <laughs> i was given up by the end um but at, at that, I kind of, what was good is I was meeting people who obviously had been through maybe similar experiences to me or like, you know, had a bit of a love for that world. But then they were also had their their love of the the main, the music that everyone was listening to, the, yeah. you know, the current the current music. And, and I think it, I'm really grateful. I mean, still some of them to this day, you know, I see them dotting around the music in music beers and we hang out and always have plenty of people to call on and, and they're really good people. So yeah, Wonderful. lucky. Wonderful. I'm going to take you home. Tell me favorite song for an artist from your home County, please. Oh, well, I, cause I'm Irish and Welsh. And then I think it's somewhere, somewhere in there, there's a bit of an English thing, but I, my parents essentially came from Belfast and Swansea and then came to London. So that's, that's kind of my combo. So I actually went with um, I went. I'm going with Niall Horan. I'm going with that my favorite One Directioner. <laughs> I'm saying it. So I I just like slow hands, man. That is a jam. Yeah. So I wanted to connect with that Irish but living in England. Yeah. Um, roots, and I think I mean, slow hands is just a jam. Saying it, it's a jam, and I think the reason I'm bringing this up is because you said home country. And for me, home country means like roots. It means culture. It means like ancestry. And I think sometimes I just, some types of music sung by certain types of people just gets you. And you're like, why do I like this so much? And it's because we're probably, you know, real cousins or something. I don't know. Like we're all from the same area. It's Ireland is not a big place. And Ireland feel like each other. Well, it's weird actually, because I don't really go there that often, but. There was a time where, you know, you get off. I'm on the aeroplane and I start looking around and I start seeing everyone who looks a bit more like me. And then I get off and I'm like, why is this 
weirdly feel really good. And and similarly, I don't come from Scotland, but I I need to get my twenty three in me because I reckon there's some in there. Whenever I go just, to like, have you just thrown Scotland in the mix as well now? Sorry, you said Wales. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, my name is Scottish, Yun, but when I go, whenever I go to Scotland, I also whenever I look around, I see everyone I see. I'm like, and it's the only place I can go in the world where where I say my name Yun and people don't go what. Yeah, there's like my name is on like big buildings and stuff. It's like McEwen Hall and this and you and that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I exist here. It's nice. <laughs> but that's why I'm going with Ireland. I'm going with my, you know, they say cultures passed down through the through the mothers, aren't they? Don't, yeah. don't they? So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Ireland and I'm going to go with Niall because of that combo of that classic pop songwriting. But he, you like, even when he's doing the poppiest music that, you know, there ever was or whatever, I can still feel those Celtic tones and that, that yeah. Celtic reach. And so for me, I'm, that's what I'm going with. Obviously there's like Hosier and, and stuff, but I think sometimes I'm a, I'm a little bit more pop in, on some days of the week. So I'm going to go with that. Wonderful. This is your last track now, you and I'm going to ask you to tell me a song that you think many may not know that you would like them to hear. So my other favourite Irish singer, um, <laughs> only part is Freya Ridings the one the only she's um she shouted me out and I'm really grateful to her for that and um she's just dropped her album Blood Orange um it's out everywhere and I think it's charting I think this week which is really really exciting and um I didn't have a hand in this tune but I've had a hand in some of the other tunes so with with her album coming out last week it's the only thing I can basically think about you're asking me what's a song that I want everyone to hear and it's, I'm so one track minded, so focused at the moment. It was like, it's it's all about her, you know, love her so much. And so my tune is going to be Bite Me from Freya Ridings because it's, 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 it's connecting with all these kind of indie roots, banger energy, but with the songwriting of the songwriting. It's just this kind of amazing songwriting that's so condensed and sophisticated and beautiful that meets the sound world of this kind of grooving, rocky indie bands. It's not rocky, it's more indie. It's like 70s-esque, but... It, and a fun fact about this song is that Miley Cyrus almost wanted it. Um, and she was she was interested in the song and it was a question, but <laughs> I don't know if this which if this is the, the better path to have chosen or the other path would have been fun to go down, but... Um, it kind of brought it back in the running a little bit. It was yeah. it was a song that wasn't 100% feeling like Freya, but Miley Cyrus wanted it. And then it was like, oh, let's have a listen to this one again. And we listened to it in the car and it just, it, it slapped. That's the truth. It just, it was cutting through this grooving bass line. So, um, and now hearing flowers coming out from Miley, you can kind of hear that bass groove why she would have wanted it on the album because it's got a similar kind of aesthetic to what Miley's doing. Um, so yeah, Bite Me for Air Ridings is my my ultimate choice of the moment. Lovely payback there, mate. I'm liking that. Um, we make it easy for people to go and uh, check out uh, Fra's track as well as all of the other tracks that you've, you've chosen today, Ewan, because we put together a little Spotify playlist to accompany the pod so people can go and get stuck in. And obviously, we'll put your music on there as well. So let's talk about your oh, music. Um, what's yeah, happening? Thanks. What's coming up? Man, there's loads of things happening. It's I I, really, I just feel in this amazing place with the music at the moment. It's incredible. Um, so the song that you chose, Art of Letting Go, was from last year. I, I released a couple of singles last year. Um and what's really nice is when I release music, it just, it seems to, so the what, the, I, I, you can never guess which song is going to be the one, man. And so I just put out a bunch of songs and then people latched onto Art of Letting You Go. And it's so beautiful to see people like messaging me and like making lyric videos and, and really co just connecting with it on like kind of a semi-spiritual level. It's, it's, I feel really honored. Um, So on a similar note, I'm going to start releasing singles again. My next one is on the 18th of May. It's called Light Up. And I suppose it's about, you know, we all experience pain. We all experience knockdowns. But it's it's about how, how many times you get up, not how many times you get down. And um, and for me, it's, it's Light Up is this idea and this concept that 
kind of when you go into get into your flow state or whatever it is that you really love or when you really start fighting for your own life or whatever it is um so I kind of want to pass that on and it's a big part of my life and a big part of doing music as a job or you know anything anyone who does anything that's kind of scary or intense or you know could potentially go wrong or (laughs) any second you have to kind of get into your badass mode and just make some stuff happen so this song really means a lot to me and that's coming out and then in I'm going to release a couple of more summary like up upbeat ones and but what I'm working on at the studio at the moment is an autumnal like kind of wintry acoustic selection so a little bit closer to Art of Letting You Go which has that calm relaxing nature um I just thought I'd match the seasons and um have some more energy for the summer and and then release probably an EP of about six or seven tracks this this autumn I'm still messing with names a title to the EP, but um, it's feeling really, really exciting. Um, and then what's even more exciting, um, it, is that even possible, is Freya's asked if I'll come on tour with her. So from September till kind of November, we'll be in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and the, and what do we call it, England, uh, to finish at the Apollo um so that's that's really really exciting so that's what's going on for me it's all wow. guns blazing it's 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 an exciting time and we got this studio in september and some of the core values for this autumn music that i'm making right now has been like every instrument has to have been a performance every instrument needs to be recorded and you know we've got my wonky weird little upright piano which i'm recording on all these songs in it I don't know. There's, there's so much music where there's it's MIDI or it's it's in a computer, and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I I kind of come from those Damien Rice roots. That was kind of one of the biggest icons, like Damien Rice and David Bowie and stuff. And I'm just trying to channel some of that. Human hands have touched everything that was on this. Um, so in the studio we've got with capacity to record drums and to record piano and record bass and I've got an analog uh, I've got this profit um which one profit fix um so all the synths are going to be like real synths and stuff and it's it's meaning a lot to me and it's feeling like the most me music I've ever made so that's that's it that's where I'm at and it's uh it's a really really good time and if people want to sort of keep up to speed with all of this where's the best place to to follow you so obviously i kind of posting on spotify um and apple music um youtube i release little snippets and lyric videos and stuff but my main point in contact would be instagram so that's where i live i mean we can try and bring facebook back but (laughs) um i'm avoiding tiktok for the moment a little bit i'm gonna get into it but Honestly, sometimes when I've got TikTok, like even just downloaded on my phone, I have a worse life. It just stresses me out so much. This like this idea that at any moment I could be going viral or that I could be changing my life from any video I post is like, I don't know, it's it's not real life. And it's it it really throws me out from a place of being able to do stuff to a place of like almost like just focusing and worrying yeah. on this on the internet. I like I need to be everywhere on the internet right now and it's it's really bad <laughs> it's re- it, it, it ends up being quite bad for me um so I sort of made the conscious choice to delete TikTok and um just kind of keep it to Instagram um I think I'll see if I dabble into TikTok for these releases but I don't know how you feel about all that sort of stuff but I completely echo what you've just said yeah like yeah it's uh I love what you said about wanting to know that human hands have touched everything on that record. Um, We live in a very fast paced world where everything is immediate. Everything is focused around a small device in the palm of your hand. And I think the more we can do when it involves the arts to sort of step back from that a little bit and take a breath and enjoy something, you know, and not, no, and it not enjoy the hard media. work it takes you 100%. know because it's like it's the easy option and i found myself just playing some piano in quantizing the midi and I, I, that's me i'm done song's over 
And it's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not me working on my craft. That's not me getting like, you know, persevering through something, practicing it, getting better and being able to do it. And it's like, these are all like essential parts of like life and living. And the, the, the easier we make it for ourselves, it could be the harder we make it for ourselves at different places along the journey. So I think it's really important to be conscious. Yeah. So I cut you off. Absolutely. Carry on. What, no, what no, no, that, my... that's exactly it. And, 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 and you know, if you, if you touch on the journey, I always, you know, I've, I've referenced it multiple times when, when we talk about like the first records people uh, of ball and the amount of people that go, oh yeah, I remember like I got the bus and I went down to, to WH Smith's and I bought this record and like I remember sitting on the bus on the way and looking at and it's like you remember the journey like yeah. the, the journey attached to that is so strong and and you know it's your you, life it creates yeah. meaning it's everything you could only afford one record you know and and so that one you got you cherished you played you you know you devoured the artwork and you know you absolutely obsessed over it whereas now mm got a million and one things in an instant and and sometimes it's nice to step back from that and take a deep breath and just yeah enjoy the the, the, the fruits of, of of somebody's labor i think and uh yeah and that and that's what i want my i want to lean into because you know you talk to prospective like labels or whoever and every everyone's got an opinion about how you can do your thing your work and you can promote yourself and for me you know i'm getting to this place where I just want to take it slower and I want to really enjoy the process of making art, whether it's artwork, or music videos and stuff. It's like, that's what I'm passionate about is, you know, the intricate details and creating meaning within these, yeah. these beautiful packages that can, can really speak to people. I know it has for me, you know, there's videos like moving on by James, which there's just an absolute stunning stop animation, you know, that kind of encapsulates everything about life and, that's what that's what it's about for me. Like finding the, those aha, where you're like, ah, oh, that's what life's about. You you really find that meaning, not just. Um, and these videos can be great and they can really reach you, but often it's more about getting your attention than. That's an important know. point it, you just made. There, it is. If you yeah. eighty and it's like, let me see if I can hold your attention. I only want it for twenty seconds though. Like you know, yeah. they, they don't want it for any kind of. Uh, God, I'm I'm literally veering into old man territory now. I'm, I'm, I'm there trying. with you. Let's I've do just it. turned fifty. I've turned fifty last <laughs> week. I'm desperately trying to be down with the kids, but uh, but yeah, it is. I do think there's so much beauty attached to the journey of of of, of getting you know your art, and and I do find that that is the thing that presents itself more and more when I speak to people about the immediacy of music now and and how disposable it can become as a, you know as a byproduct of that where it's like oh well, look. yeah it was all right but anyway have you heard this have you heard this and it's like and constantly when you're on youtube or whatever there's always something down the side of the screen going you're hey you might like this well no don't worry about that i go on the shorts by accident there you go like, <laughs> there you yeah. go it's 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 you know and and that's essentially to, to sort of wrap it up here really is why i love podcasts because that's something yeah. where people put their headphones on and disappear for an hour and yes, and it's just the long term, isn't it? Bring it back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you and it's been an absolute delight, mate. Um, thank you yeah, so you much too, for giving up your you. time and, and and talking records with me. Um, best of luck with um all of your releases this week, uh, this year, sorry. Um, have a wonderful time uh, on tour with Freya. Say hello to Freya yeah. for me. Um I will do, thanks. Dude. And uh and yeah, and honestly, um, I can't wait for people to listen to this episode and to then go and check out your playlist. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much. No, honored, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. It's been really fun chatting. I'm gonna press stop, don't go anywhere. <laughs>